Blog Talk Radio. Computer on all eyes on me. If I catch you looking at anything else, I'm gonna beat my ass like a runaway slave. Space, the final frontier. DJ. Quarter time. These are the voyages of the starship Mele Enterprise. Its five-year mission to explore. To seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no man has gone before. It is time for the hottest show on the internet. It's Red the Game Radio with your host, DJ Snellwood. In international call. Hail, hail, all the way from the Netherlands. Presenting Sayonara Night. Interface complete. Alright, that is working. I'm uh let's see what's going on, what's going on. About I was live people trying to call in to the um trying to call into the show. I'm gonna take the proper audio set up. But yeah, I uh, ain't uh, I'm trying to uh, computer on all eyes on me. I'll catch you looking at anything else. I'm going to beat my ass like a runaway slave. Space, the final frontier. DJ. Quarter time. These are the voyages of the starship Mele Enterprise. Its five year mission to explore. To seek out new life and new civilizations. Uh, to boldly go where no man. <laughs> Has gone before. It is time for the hottest show on the internet. It's Red the Game Radio with your host DJ Smith and International Call. Hail, hail, all the way from the Netherlands. Presenting Sayonite Night. Interface complete. Okay. Alright, you got this. Lord down. There you go. When you do it, you gotta set the volume to nine. Nine percent. Yeah. No, it was at it, it always starts at fifty percent. You gotta manually set it to nine percent. Oh nine percent. Oh, I thought you said fifty yeah. percent. Oh, no, because then it, it it'll play a little too loud, you know what I'm saying? No, the show actually started. Yeah, the show started and and when it starts, it, it starts, it plays the theme and everything. I still got that. But then, you know, I only got the two, the porn music and, and the Shelly K as the background music. But then it was uh-huh. weird, like, I'm, right. I'm logged in, and I went to go open up the chat, and the dang on chat didn't want to open. How much you got to be logged in? And I'm like, I'm logged in. What you talking about? Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, I don't know. It's acting up. It was acting up. I couldn't get in or on or nothing. Yeah. I got in well, the room, but it wouldn't let me do anything. Huh? I said I got in on your room, you know, the board, but it wouldn't let me do anything. Yeah, and I see that. And I, I can't see hear you. you. I couldn't hear you. In the, on the, just over the speakers? On the phone. The child's right. just I heard you for a second, and then I pushed the button. Hmm. I don't know. It's been jacked up, though. I don't know what's been the deal with that. Cause I don't know what they're doing. It's all good, people. We're still over. New location. And I just signed in again. This is some bullshit. That's what I'm saying. Um, I ain't worried about that. I ain't studying people. I signed in a couple times and called in a couple times. It was crazy. Right. It didn't let me do right. yeah. Anyways, happy Africana Our Story Month, facts and knowledge, and also happy Valentine's Day to all the lovers and people out there um, celebrating yeah, this this, uh, this date. You know, tell I me mean, what what is because you know what what is Valentine's Day? Where did that come from? Well, I guess we can look it up on Wikipedia. I don't you know, know. What's, what's significant about Valentine's Day? Like, who? Well, we know it's for lovers. We know it's to share as love. You know, got your Valentine's to the one you love. 
Let's see what they do. Any of them have to be one. <laughs> yeah, well, in your opinion, is uh, is uh, is Valentine's Day? You know, is it is it you know more catered to the woman, or is it supposed to be catered to the man, or is it supposed to be a two way street? Uh, it's supposed to be a two way street, but I think it's more towards the female these days. Yeah, and and that's what they were saying on the. I was listening to uh, Ricky Smiley's show this morning. It was a uh, comedian down here with his own little radio show, and they were saying, you know, Valentine's Day has become so. Now it's become more commercialized. For sure. And and you know now it's like you got to go out and buy a, a, a big ass De Beers diamond, or spend right. you know five hundred dollars on a trip or. You know, send her to a facial and body makeup that cost four hundred dollars. Something stupid. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm glad you didn't say flowers and candy. <laughs> no, nah, they don't even say that no more. They don't. Wow, and yeah, a card. Right? <laughs> right, yeah, bring her. You know, they act like you go to jail if you buy a, 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 some flowers, a dozen roses. How about uh, candlelight dinner? Come on now, you know. Yeah, they don't. They don't mention that. You know, they don't mention any together time. You know, where's that negligee you know you're going to buy her? Come on now. <laughs> St. Valentine's Day is Where's the bed full of roses? Yeah, huh? you know, the real creativity yeah. of it all. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going to buy the dozen roses, yeah, you the dozen roses it. to cover the bed. Yeah. To me, that ain't romantic, though, because, yeah, I don't like the smell of roses, so oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't want oh, a bed full of roses. Yeah. <laughs> you can use the fake petals. You can throw fake petals on the bed, you know. Right. And get a, and get a paper right. cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allergic to them, honey. I'm allergic, you know. Uh, uh, this is by Wikipedia. St. Valentine's Day says commonly shortened to Valentine's Day, um, which is an annual commemoration held on February 14th celebrating love and affection between... Intimate Companion. The day is named after one of more early Christian martyrs, uh, St. Valentine, and was established by Pope Galatius I in 496 A.D. Uh, it was deleted from the Roman calendar of Saints in 1969 by Pope Paul VI, but its religious observance is still permitted. It is a, traditionally a day on which lovers express their love for each other by presenting flowers, offering confectionery, and sitting at greeting cards known as Valentine. As the day first became associated with romantic love in the circle of Geoffrey Chaucer in the high Middle Ages when the tradition of courtly love flourished. Now modern-day Valentine symbols include the heart-shaped outline, doves, and the figure of the winged Cupid, which is, that is a fucking pagan sign and shit, so we ain't even go there. And since the 19th century, handwritten valentines have given way to mass-produced greeting cards. There you hmm. go. People also uh, get I, married on that day, too, you know. It's a lot of people's anniversaries today. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that is true. Uh, my, 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 my soul mate pointed that out to me. She said the most uh, births are actually in the months of February um, February and March because they lead to births in November and December. Yeah, when it's cold, baby. Huh? I say when it's cold, you get birth. <laughs> you know? It's like, wow, you have a lot of Christmas babies. But then it's the vice versa, too. You know what I'm saying? People uh, have a lot of births in February and March. So they get pregnant in, in like, uh, June and July, you know, spring break time and all that. Yeah, getting it on, yeah. baby. You know? So yeah. There you go. There you go, people. I'm a January, but baby. I know. That it, it, it does not have anything to do with religion. Um, mm. I don't know why they they even saying that, but that, that has nothing to do with religion. You're not going to find it in any Bible. Or oh, any kind of thing like that. It, it is a, a fictitious made-up holiday, uh, but at the same time, you know, people people need Saint something to, to yeah, people need something to celebrate. You know. Okay, so who who exactly was Saint Valentine? Saint Valentine. 
He's a saint. Right. And what is a saint? Yeah, right. Saint yeah. Valentine in Latin is Valentinus, and it's the name of several, 14 in all, martyred saints of ancient Rome. The name Valentine derived from Valens, which means worthy, strong, or powerful, and was popular in late antiquity. Of the Saint Valentine who feast is on February 14th, nothing is known except his name and that he was buried at the Via uh, Flaminia, north of Rome, on February 14th. It is even uncertain whether the feast of that day celebrates only one saint or more saints of the same name. And for this reason, this liturgical commemoration was not kept in the Catholic calendar of saints for universal liturgical veneration as revised in 1969. But martyr Valentinus, the Presbyter, and those with him at Rome remains in the list of saints proposed by a venera- uh, veneration by all Catholics. So technically it's a Catholic holiday because that's all it's mentioning. Well, I don't do Catholic. I don't yeah. do religion. Yeah, no. But happy but Valentine's I'm, Day anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, but I mean, yeah, we it, need to it, celebrate it. love every day. You know, one yeah. love, people, oh. one love. Come on. You yeah, know, yeah. If, 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 you know, it, it's all in the eyes of the beholder, you know, of how they practice it, you know what I'm saying, or how you, you know, if you if you got the money, you know, yeah, go on out there and ball on out. But if you don't, yeah. you know what I'm saying, the traditional way is just, just to be as creative as possible, you know, and sim- the, the most simplest things create the biggest smiles. Yeah, like picking your neighbor's flowers out of the yard. Damn mm-hmm. right. Go pick them damn roses. Take that, Bill. Chop you off a couple of fresh ones. Yeah, baby, these are super fresh. <laughs> and if Bill comes to knocking, I bought them for you. <laughs> what's wrong with what's wrong with proposing with a cigar ring anyway? Huh? With a cigar <laughs> ring? What, that, what is yeah. that? You know the cigar label that's around the um the ring that's around the uh, cigar? You know the label? Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, it looks like a little ring. You know what I mean? Pick it up. That's been done before. People have proposed with cigar rings. Wow. It's That's extra silly. cheap. <laughs> <laughs> That's extra hey, cheap. Hey, man, it's about the love. It ain't about the ring and the size hey, of the ring. But a you cigar, know, you know. It's not they don't about even that. Smoke cigars. What you know, is it? What are you buying cigars for? Celebrating, you know. All right. Most people Celebrate. do the uh, macaroni necklaces, and, you know, paint them red, you know, I know. and put the the make the macaronis in form of a heart. And there you there go. You go. There Damn, you go. They got a macaroni necklace, and people who will why not? Will cherish that. Thoughts that count. Oh, yeah, they'll they'll cherish that. Oh, the it, it is the thought. It is the thought that counts. So, you know. Uh, and what does it have to do with African history month? Nothing, people. But hey, this hey, is falling into our month day. full of love, people. Month full of love. Yeah. Now, one thing I do want to see is Gasparilla. Gasparilla. Do you all celebrate Gasparilla Day? Never even heard of Gasparilla. Fill me in. Teach me something new today. Well, if I can find it, the fictitious day that they sit up here and celebrate this crap. Which I only like see Mardi Gras? Like Mardi Gras? <laughs> uh, it's That's similar, thing, but, but uh, Gasparilla was actually is a celebration, and don't tell me, don't ask me why it's a celebration. Uh, but these fools down here uh, set aside three days to celebrate the the pirates that came here, robbed, pillaged, and scavenged. Uh, you know, during their little rain, and that's what Gasparilla Day is. So they have all of these floats that they float down uh, downtown Tampa. You know what I'm saying? Predominantly white folks. You know, we, it, it has nothing to do with black folks. You know, even though we had black pirates back in the days, this has nothing to do with them. This is for doctors, lawyers, and all these crooked folks to get together because it costs a hundred thousand dollars to get your own float or to ride on a float. Just to throw out beads to people alongside the, the road. 
That's it. Sounds like any other parade to me, <laughs> like Mardi Gras. You know, yeah, and, and, and to me, it's a mimic of Mardi Gras, but Mardi Gras is, is the Spanish holiday where they, they, you know, well, wait, so. look, look it up. Yeah, because I don't, you know, ain't no sense if you got a computer, people. There's no sense in second guessing. Uh, okay, so Mardi Gras. Social media, aren't we second guessing anyway? <laughs> you know, it's the carnival season, and that's celebrated yeah. in New Orleans. But what is it? Uh, Mardi Gras is French for Fat Tuesday. Huh. Okay, and it's referring to the. It's the. It's the. It's referring to the practice of the last night of eating richer, fatty foods before the ritual. Fasting of the Lenten season, which started yeah, on Ash nobody's Wednesday. Doing that. Nobody's doing yeah. that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They probably eat more food, but they ain't cutting back. I ain't never seen that. You know what I'm saying? Well, technically, at Mardi Gras, they drink more than anything else, so that ain't a lot of eating going on, anyways. You know, they take it as the time to just get super toe up, show your titties for uh, free beef. You know, and, and just just look crazy. Uh, the related popular practices were associated with celebrations before the fasting and religious obligations associated with the penitential season of Lent. And popular practices included wearing masks and costumes, overturning social conventions, dancing, sports competitions, parades, and etc. Um... In English, we call it Shrove Tuesday, which is associated with the religious requirement for confession before Lent begins. Well, ain't nobody doing that. <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody doing that. They're doing it out in the streets anyway at Monte Gras. Nationally, they're already confessing what they're doing. Uh, did you say confess? They're out in the yeah. streets. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, and I, honestly, I thought that was a something that had to do with cause, because you would think Mardi Gras had something to do with Spanish. Yeah, it you had nothing to do with the Spanish people. People, it's a French holiday. Uh, what day is there it? You know? What what uh, day? Ash Wednesday. What day is Ash Wednesday? Uh, let's What's see, Ash? March March eighth, two thousand. Twelve a day is February twenty first. I guess it's supposed to move or something. Uh, but it's local, cultural, and it's Catholic. Why do all the pagan stuff come from the Catholic religion? Well, now they got Jesus yeah. hanging on a cross. You know what I'm saying, man? Please. Hey, that, the that's so, but, don't have any and, graven images. Yeah, that's so. But see, and and where they stole the image of the of the the cross. Is from the the uh, comedic symbol called the unk, and the unk is that is is the cross with the fallopian tube on top of it, which symbolizes the woman's uh, fertility and and birth, combined with the two lines which re- represent the male principles, you know, actually you know the the, the yeah. your balls, and then the long the long uh, extended is the shaft is the male shaft, so together those though all those elements represent life and completion but you know the the you know when they came over here and, and you know took took the images of, of whatever they wanted to form the united states with they took that they knocked that off just made a straight shaft which leads to nowhere and 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 therefore that's why you got you know what i'm saying the the cross but then it is a mockery though when you do wear the cross with the with the the lord jesus christ hanging on it yeah, I don't do you any of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you you know, you really, you know, people out there, if y'all wearing that, you need to change the fashion statement up and actually do your history on that. Uh, because you, you actually, you know, uh, you actually blaspheme it, you know. This is, uh, well, I don't care about Mardi Gras, so. All right. Well, anyway, Mardi Gras has nothing that, to do with, you know. Has nothing to do with African history, so there we go. Five minutes. You got five minutes. Yeah, and uh, let's see, Valentine's promo, promo. Yeah, well, you know, I got to keep the promos, man. 
Uh, and matter of fact, I'm gonna have a little promo that I'm making just to play. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna upload that. Where's Scoopy Bone on that? Yeah, well, yeah, you posted that and made it. No, we ain't got that. I gotta hit him up. Matter of fact, find out where that's at. And uh, everybody go to www.trilateralradio.com. Make sure you click on the Listen Live button. We do have music streaming live now, uh, and we'll have some more music actually uploaded, uh, and it'll be streaming live. So make sure you check that out. And then, uh, you know, Lord willing, by the end of this month, we we really working hard on getting these live, getting the live show streams up. And uh, getting the shows back in rotation because this thirty minutes BS right here is just that BS. <laughs> and uh, and knowing blog talk, they probably don't make the chat the chat room uh, a, a premium feature. <laughs> probably because I tried to get the chat open too and it wouldn't let me. I, 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 I wouldn't doubt it. You know, it might have been it, because you we were both trying to do it at the same time. I thought you weren't going to be um, at the computer today. Oh, okay. Well, no, no, because I'm saying I, when I when the show first started, before you was in the queue, I had yeah. already tried to to open it, and it it talking about you need to, you need to log in, you need to register. And I'm already logged in because how could I start the switchboard if I wasn't logged in? Yeah, I was acting crazy. I know because I was in trying to get on the switchboard too. So yeah, acting crazy, yeah. and I couldn't. Eat, I got on the switchboard, but I couldn't do anything on the switchboard. And I couldn't hear. I thought you were out and about, you know. Well, I was trying to call in through my Gmail, and the Gmail wouldn't pick up uh, the the, the call in number. So then I had to call it with my cell phone. But I didn't really want to call in the cell phone because it's actually going dead, and I didn't want to be doing you know 15 minutes into the show and then it, it kill out. But it, it's lasted. It lasted the show, so it's all good, all great. You know. Well, you got you yeah. got time, so you can look up um, some inventors, black inventors. Well, you have yeah, we got uh, history, man. Of uh, this time, Spencer peanut butter. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Talk about that before. Yeah, uh, that was uh, oh man, wasn't that Carver? That sounds familiar. Hold on, I think that was Carver that, that great peanut butter. Yeah. Uh, uh, was the I thought it was George Washington Carver. That's what I thought it was. Let's oh. see. Sounds about right. And yeah. It was not until George Washington Carver's day that ingredients like sugar and molasses were added to the recipe to make it more enjoyable. But technically, peanuts are the native of the tropics of the Americas and were mashed to become a pasty substance by the Aztec Native Americans hundreds of years ago. A number of peanut paste products have been used over the centuries, and the distinction between peanut paste and peanut butter is not always clear-cut in ordinary use. Early models of peanut butter, like the Aztecs version, were nothing but pure roasted peanut paste. It was harder to work with and spread than regular peanut butter and had more of an unadulterated, uh, yet somewhat more bitter taste. And then, of course, uh, George Washington Carver came along and, you know, just re- reinvented the process. Uh, vegetable oil was also later added to most brands to aid in its spreadability. But with new modern processing machines being invented, the peanut butter was already significantly smoother than it had been. Bam. Yeah, so, you remember. It is I a remember. U.S. thing. Yeah, it is George Washington Carp. Shouts out to him. Uh, that made the peanut butter. Let's see. The good old stoplight. Let's see if it has that. Stoplight. Let's see if it gives us. The typewriter too, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, typewriter. Well, I mean, it's a million inventions, people. A million inventions. We yeah, don't get credit a whole for. Lot yeah, you know, they, they don't give no credit. But let's see. This says on December tenth, eighteen sixty-eight, the first traffic lights were installed outside the British House of Parliament in London by the railway engineer J.P. Knight. 
and they resembled railway signals of the time with semaphore arms and red and green gas lamps for night use. The gas lantern was turned with a lever at its base so that the appropriate light faced traffic. Unfortunately, it exploded on 2nd of January 1869, injuring or killing the policeman who was operating. The modern electric traffic light is an American invention. And as early as 1912 in Salt Lake City, Utah, policeman Lester Wire invented the first red-green electric traffic light. On August 5, 1914, the American Traffic Signal Company installed a traffic signal system on the corner of East 105th Street and Euclid Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio. It had two colors, red and green, and a buzzer based on the design of James Hogue to provide a warning for color changes. The design by James Hogue allowed police and fire stations to control the signals in case of emergency. And the first four-way or three-color traffic light was created by police officer William Potts in Detroit, Michigan in 1920. And in 1922, T.E. Hayes patented his combination traffic guide and traffic regulating signal. And also in Asheville, Ohio, claims to be the location of the oldest working traffic light in the United States, used at an intersection of public roads in 1982 when it was moved to a local museum. Bam. And, of course, Wikipedia doesn't get into the black, black or, or white issues. So, you know, but it's all good. If you do your history, you, you'll find out, yeah, black man created it. Thank you. Because the truth behind that was they created it back in the days when it was just, uh, you know, the wind-up wagons because people kept crashing into each other. So brother seen the problem. He came along, devised this little pole system with the, the, the stop and go, the red and green light, and people were supposed to follow it. And did turn, and that's why I just believe they mimic and they, they line. They just mimic the idea because they turned and face the, the way that the traffic was supposed to, to continue. So every time when they stop, it'll turn, and it'll turn green. Stop, turn green. And, and it kept rotating like that, you know what I'm saying? So then everybody, you know, came along, and now they've uh, refurbished uh, the the the, the uh, cross the, the, the uh, stoplight. So don't believe what I say, people. Go and read it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Go and read it for yourself. Uh, you can go to, I think it's, what is it, 1001 Inventors? Oh, wait a minute. Hi, right, Cheryl. Oh, there. 1001 Black Inventors or something like that. Let me see. All right, let's see. Entertainment. Yeah, you can go to Inventors, or is this, what is this, inventors.about.com, uh, which you can click on Black Inventors, A through Z, and it lists a, um, it has a, a, Z, a through Z list of popular black inventors that we have more extensive information on biography, images, timelines, and other media. And the Black Inventors Patent Holders List contains many more names. However, a biography may or may not be available. So for further research, we suggest using the Black History Month landing page, which if you go to the website, inventors.about.com, you will find more information there. Bam. Listed at the top is Mr. Emmett W. Chappelle, who was one of the most was one of the 100 most distinguished African American scientists and engineers of the 20th century. And you can start all the way at the top, and work your way down at the bottom. You got all kind of people: George Alcorn, uh, Bergie Ammons. Uh, who else we got? George Washington Carver, George Carruthers. Uh, Benjamin Carson, Emmett Chappelle. You have a couple of names in the highlights, and I guess you can go in and really click on them to see, uh, you know, what was the significance uh, uh, from from what they did. Uh, Marjorie hey. Stewart Joyner, Jack Johnson. Let's see here. Roscoe Coots, Ruth Myro. What did he do? Roscoe. 
Uh, oh, Roscoe Kuntz. What's his invention? That's a funny name. Roscoe L. Kuntz designed a pinhole gamma ray camera called the Collimator and helped to design and fabricate automatic air and water radiation activity measuring devices. Damn. This was back in 1922, people. He graduated from Bashan High School in St. Louis. His college education at Stowe's Teachers College was interrupted by a three-year hitch in the U.S. Army during World War Three. Uh, two, excuse me. And while in the Army, he received technical training through a special pre-engineering Army training program at West Virginia State College. And upon discharge from the Army in 1946, he returned to Tennessee State University and graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry. Man. Interesting. He was among the first formally trained health physicists through his participation in the first Atomic Energy Health Physics Fellowship Training Program Sponsored at the University of Rochester in 1948. Uh, He designed a pinhole gamma ray camera in Calamator and helped to... Okay, I just read all that. Damn. Atomic, what does that mean? He helped build the atomic bomb? (laughs) Well, (laughs) just just atomic energy, not necessarily in in that program. No, not in that program, but he got it started. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, this is so health physicists became a recognized profession around 1942 and when Roscoe L. Kuntz entered the field there were few rules and guidelines and profe- uh, procedures for health physicists to follow together with their instructors the early students like Kuntz originated many of today's practices instrumentation and techniques to protect people from the hazards of ionizing radiation bam Ouch! So you know he he was he was one of the people that that made that 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 machine to test radiation. That's basically what that does, uh, and recognize the radiation. And, and uh, hmm. let's go to the women then. How about uh, for one for the for, for the ladies? You have Mary Bellis, uh, who has been writing about inventors since nineteen. Oh uh, well, and then my not her. Why? Because she's just she's one of the people who's just been doing research. She's one of the authors that wrote the little article on Roscoe L. Kuntz. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So she, she's not an inventor. She she's a uh, she's a, a historian. Yeah. She just wrote all the wrote all of the. Let's see who he is. Elijah McCoy. Wow, he got a hard little uh, image. <laughs> he looked like uh, Red Fox. Or uh, Fred, uh, Fred Sampson back in the day. Yeah. Sampson, uh, Where's hmm. the lady at? And this is where it's coming from. So you want the real McCoy. Yep. That means you want the real thing and what you know to be of the highest quality, not an inferior imitation. The noted African American inventor Elijah McCoy was issued more than 57 patents for his inventions during his lifetime. And his best known invention was a cup that fed lubricating oil to machine bearings through a small bore tube. And mechanics and engineers who wanted genuine McCoy lubricators might have used the expression, the real McCoy. <laughs> I didn't know that. Bam. That's from a brother. The came real from McCoy. From a brother. The real McCoy. I remember. Uh, let's, get, let's get one Where's for the Where's the woman at? Let's see. Who we got? Uh, Let's get one of these women up in here. Alice Parker. Let's see what she did. That ring a bell? No. Well, you can thank her for heat. In 1919, Alice Parker of Morristown, New Jersey, invented a new and improved gas heating furnace that provided central heating. Yes, people, your central air and heat. Yeah. Thank you, Alice Parker, a black woman. And you can view Alice Parker's patent below. And it shows a description of how she uh, developed the uh, had the the pipes going through the wall, and this shows a uh, a vent at the top of the wall where the pipes are channeled through. She has uh, some pipes leading from the outside, which apparently came sucked air from the outside, heated the air through the walls, and then out of the vent. Wow. 
That's why we're warm and toasty. You know what I'm saying? Have a warm and heated. toasty. But let America tell it. Goddamn General Electric was the first one that created, you know what I'm saying, fucking gas and, <laughs> and shit. You know what I'm mean? saying? Goddamn thieves. Uh, uh, let's not go there now. We're taking away the time from uh, inventors. How many minutes did it Bunch it's about over. Oh, no, we are. Yeah, we we into the whenever they cut us off. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm saying. Any second now. <laughs> you know. I love uh, Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. You know that. And and for for Valentine's Day, the women all over the world should thank. Uh, and she she is the one that actually gets a lot of uh, praise, though. You know, they do mention her, Madam C J Walker. 1867 to 1990, uh, 1919, I got my start by giving myself a start. That is quote, unquote, by Madame C.J. Walker. And born Sarah Breedlove McWilliams Walker, better known as Madame C.J. Walker or Madame Walker, together with um, Marjorie Joyner, revolutionized the hair care and cosmetic industry for African-American women early in the 20th century. And um, she was the daughter of former slaves. She was orphaned at the age of seven. Walker and her older sister survived by working in the cotton fields of Delta and Vicksburg, Mississippi. She married at age 14, and her only daughter was born in 1885. After her husband's death, two years later, she traveled to St. Louis to join her four brothers who had established themselves as barbers. And working as a laundry woman, she managed to save enough money to educate her daughter and became involved in activities with the National Association of Colored Women. Inspired by the need, during the 1890s, Sarah began to suffer from a scalp ailment that caused her to lose some of her hair. Embarrassed by her appearance, she experimented, experimented with a variety of homemade remedies and products made by another black woman entrepreneur, Annie Malone. In 1905, Sarah became a sales agent for Malone and moved to Denver, where she married Charles Joseph Walker. Uh, Madame Walker's wonderful hair grower, changing her name to Madame C.J. Walker, Sarah founded her own business and began selling her own product called Madame Walker's Wonderful Hair Grower, a scalp conditioning and healing formula. To promote her product, she embarked on an exhausting sales drive throughout the South and Southeast, selling her products door-to-door, giving demonstrations, and working on sales and marketing strategies. In 1908, she opened a college in Pittsburgh to train her Hair culturists. Yes. Thank you, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, eventually, her products formed the basis of a thriving national corporation, uh, employing at one point over 3,000 people. And her Walker system, which included a broad offering of cosmetics, licensed Walker agents, and Walker schools offered meaningful employment and personal growth to thousands of black women. But Dan Walker's aggressive marketing strategy combined with relentless ambition led her to be labeled as the first known African-American woman to be a self-made millionaire. Yes, indeedy. And having amassed a fortune in 15 years, this pioneering businesswoman died at the age of 52, her prescription for success was perseverance, hard work, faith in herself and in God, and honest business dealing, and of course, quality products. There's no royal flower strong path to success you once observed, and if there is, I have not found it. For if I have accomplished anything in life, it is because I have been willing to work hard. Didn't you also become the first black female? Millionaire? No, that's what it said. Yeah, she's the first. She was the first black millionaire. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, self self made uh, millionaire. You know what I'm saying? That's Not it. born into it. Yeah, she made yeah. it all on her own, people. Yeah. So all y'all out there, you know, you got this. You got this. You got this. See, this is the importance of of you know. Of Black History Month, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not just it's not just for my personal knowledge and filling me in on things that I didn't know about my culture. It's filling the world in on everyday uses of products that you all use and the true origins of that. Because everything was not manufactured by the the today's leading people. You know what I'm saying? That that have 
repatent or reimprove the product. Right yeah, or refurbish the product and put a, a new and improved name to it, which is that's that's what they call stealing. But they 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 uh they disguise it as, as refurbished. You know, it's called still. Yeah. When the patent's over, you can um, call it improved, and it's, you know. Yeah, yeah, you can improve. Yeah. You can improve it, you know. Yeah. That's great, you know, yeah. Um, Improve. She also improved the permanent wave machine. And an employee of Madame C.J. Walker's Empire, Marjorie Joyner, invented an improved permanent wave machine. Um, This device patent in 1928 curled or permed women's hair for a relatively lengthy period of time. The wave machine was popular among uh, women, white and black, allowing for longer-lasting wavy hairstyles. Jordan went on to become a prominent figure in Madame T.J. Walker's industry, though she never profited directly from her invention, uh, the assigned intellectual property of the Walker Company. So she really didn't get credit because, you know, it was was still under... Yeah, but she still got paid. Yeah, she still got paid. And uh, last but not least, before we get out of here and get cut off for the two minutes, this is just some inspirational words uh, from Madam C.J. Walker on herself. Uh, I am a woman who came from the cotton fields of the South. From there, I was promoted to the wash tub. From there, I was promoted to the cook kitchen. And from there, I promoted myself into the business of manufacturing hair goods and preparations. I have built my own factory on my own ground. And that is from Madam Walker. Inspiration to all women of every color. And the true origin of, of why a lot of you went well, you know, a lot of you women are beautiful today, you know what I'm saying? Because of her product. You know? And a lot of you women can grow your hair. Uh although they've come out with all these knockoffs nowadays that actually uh you know, make your hair fall out. <laughs> uh, you know, by putting too many chemicals in. You know, and uh, so you got to go back, people. You got to go back in the history and find the natural processes because the stuff they use nowadays. Oh man, it's it's it's, it's in home chemotherapy. Chemical <laughs> versus herbal, herbal versus chemical. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole. That's a whole show and all that, you know, herbal versus chemicals and stuff. We will cover that one day uh, on the show. And uh, to all people of the world, you know, I, I encourage you. Yeah, this, we get a, 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 a month long of history, but believe you me, people, it takes a whole lot longer than a month to cover black inventors and the people that helped uh, uh, shape this country, you know what I'm saying, for what it is.